So once again, I am myself Nandish Thakur with my friend Maulik Bhatt welcomes you to the lecture series for building autonomous hand follower robot of Privance 2K11. In this second lecture, we will be dealing with sensors. We have divided our lecture into two parts. In this first part, we will be introducing you to the general concept and the circuitry of our sensors and we will be dealing in detail with IRLED and photodial. So let's start with sensors. As I have already told you in my first lecture that the functioning of sensor in autonomous line follower robot resembles with the function of our eyes. That means detection of path. Now, basically, three types of sensors are widely used in building line following robot. They are proximity sensors, infrared, and limit switches. We will be dealing with infrared sensors. Now infrared term comes from infra means below a Latin word and red. As we all know that the red color is having highest wavelength invisible spectra and as infrared has having greater wavelengths than red it is termed as infrared as it comes after red color okay in this in the circuitry of our sensors uh, we will be having four types of component basically so our circuit is made up of IRAD photodiode comparator and potentiometer or pot we use sensors to detect the part to know whether our robot is in white region or in black region we can accomplish this task by using emitter and receiver and depending upon whether our receiver has received light or not we can know whether our bot is in white region or in black let's talk first about our emitter we will be using infrared LEDs as our emitter Now, when forward blast, IR emits infrareds. The general circuit of it is this is a symbol of any LED. Well, the forward voltage drop of IR is 1.2 volt to 1.5 volt and we use this resistor in series with IR to prevent excess of current well so now how to know whether our LED is working or not this is IR LED the longer one tail is anode and the shorter one is cathode now when we follow by this LED, it will emit IR rays. And to follow by it, we will use our multimeter as it is a handy tool. Now putting our, our, putting our multimeter on connectivity mode and connecting this positive terminal to its anode and negative to cathode. You can see the red, red dot here. When I follow by it, it will emit IR rays. People are having misconception 
that the red dot, that the red dot you just saw when traversing the IR was of IR means was of infrared rays. But mind you that no human eye can detect infrared rays. So how to know whether our LED is working or not? Generally, these LEDs are made up of gallium arsenide. And as you all know that the wavelength or frequency of rays emitted from any semiconductor material depends upon the energy band gap of it. The energy band gap of gallium arsenide is such that that the rays emitted are having two wavelength components. One of IR and second of red color under visible spectra. So the red dot you just saw was because of the wavelengths of red color coming under visible spectra and not of IR. Now let's talk about receiver. We can use this same IR as receiver also. But for better precision, we will be using ready-made photodiodes available in the market. This is photodiode. The longer one tail is anode and the shorter one is cathode. We use a photodiode in reverse bias condition. The circuit is as follows. Now, let's know about the functioning of photodiode. When it's on black surface, the photodiode, <coughs> sorry, when it's on black surface, as no air is falling on photodiode, it will be having maximum voltage drop across it. And as soon as IR falls on photodiode, the voltage drop or the dynamic resistance of photodiode decreases. So when it is on black surface, it is having dynamic resistance of about 150 kilo ohm. And on white, as maximum IR are reflected back by white surface, its dynamic, dynamic resistance decreases to 10 kilo ohm. If you have supplied 5 volts to the circuit, the voltage drop across it on black surface is 3.5 volt to about 4.8 volt and on white it ranges between 0 to 2.5 volts. But you must note that as the particular behavior of any photodiode or IR varies from diode to diode. And also, as no two surfaces are having same reflectivity, we need to calibrate our sensors. But we will be dealing with the calibration part in the second part of our lesson on sensors. Thank you.